John Lee once said that one of the first things you notice when you start practicing, or the first thing you learn about when you start practicing, is your own defilements. And so when, when you begin to try to fighting off greed, anger, delusion, sleepiness, restlessness, that you realize how strong they are. Otherwise, you just go along with the flow. If today seems a good day to be lazy, just be lazy. If today is a good day to be industrious, you're industrious. In other words, you tend to follow your moods without thinking about them. Except to the extent that, say, you have a job that requires you to do things you don't want, but you say, well, I've just got to do this, and you sort of steal yourself to whatever needs to be done. But when you're meditating, you don't have those outside strictures, which makes it all the more difficult to fight off these moods. Because you could be sitting out under the trees for hours and just drifting off, and there's no one riding herd, there's no schedule that forces you to do this, do that. So you need inner resources to depend on. You have to have an inner sense of discipline. And John Fuhrman once made a comparison to having inner teacher who rides herd on her students. And his experience with teachers was basically the first four grades of primary school. Okay, today is your time. Now is your time for reading. Now is your time for math. And in those days, they allow teachers to, to hit the students, too. So it's a fairly harsh image, but it's an important one, because you need to really be able to bear down on your defilements when they start taking over. And you don't have to be afraid that their feelings will be hurt. You don't have to be afraid that they'll, their self-respect will be hurt. That's not an issue here. The issue is power, what power they have over the mind and how you're going to counteract it. Basically, the power of feelings comes from their ability to get into your physical system. In other words, it's when a thought is strong enough that it begins to affect the way you breathe, it begins to, it begins to affect the way the blood flows in your body. It's the physical sense of how your body feels, say, when there's anger, desire, restlessness. That's when the thought has taken over. And its techniques are basically two. One is it gives you certain reasons for why it has to be this way, it has to be that way. And then the second one, technique, of course, is the effect that it has on the body. You've got to get it out of your system. The only way you know to get it out of your system is to go along with a thought. Well, that doesn't solve anything at all. You've got to learn how to withstand it from both sides. In other words, learn how to breathe in such a way that these feelings don't take control of your physical system. as you're doing right now, learning how to breathe through tension, learning how to adjust the way you breathe. These are important techniques in learning how to get out of defilement from through the back door, through its influence over the body. And then you apply these techniques to your daily life. When someone says something that has you angry, you learn how to breathe through the, the tension that builds up inside you. So that the anger is just a thought and not an unbearable sensation in the body. And you have to find various techniques for this. There's not just one breathing technique that's going to work in all situations. There are techniques for dealing with sleepiness. You start breathing more heavily, say. Once the physical side of the feeling is, is normalized, then you can start looking at the mental side, exactly what reasons are there for a particular defilement. For example, sleepiness. That seems to be a, an innocent enough one. But often the mind is just getting bored. You have to test that first. That's why the Buddha has all those techniques for 
testing sleepiness before you get into it. In other words, once it's passed the test and you're still sleeping, but that's a sign that the body really need, does need to rest, and then you give it some rest. But otherwise, if you find that giving the mind work to do, like going through the parts of the body, getting up, walking around, washing your face, looking up at the stars if it's at night, imagining a bright light in front of you. You try all these various techniques to see if it's simply a subterfuge of the mind, a way of the mind's way of avoiding its work. Once you've given it a good test, many times you find the sleepiness does go away, in which case you can get back to your meditation. If it doesn't go away, then you really do need to rest, and you can lie down and know that you've tested yourself properly, and haven't just given in to a passing mood. As for other emotions, other mind states that come through, you have to test them in the same way. To see what reasons they have. Say something has you angered. Once you've breathed through the physical side of the anger, you can look at the mental side and see exactly how much logic there is, how much reasonableness there is in the anger, in your dissatisfaction with whatever the situation may be. And try to listen to what the mind has to say. Ask it, why are you angry about this? What are your reasons? And listen for that tone of voice which is bullying its, bullying its way through your mind. It's a sign that's not really reasonable. So you have to dig further, further, further until you find out what the reason is. so-and-so hasn't lived up to your standards. Okay, who are you? Are you the National Board of Standards? You have to learn learn how to question your reasons. Be cynical about your own... Because if you can't be cynical about your own feelings, how are you going to see through them? This doesn't mean that they're all false, but you have to test them. Otherwise, you never get around their power. So whatever comes into the mind, you don't have to immediately sign with it. In particular, when something has come into the mind and then spread into the body, you have to be very careful about siding with it. Because otherwise we go through life with our old knee-jerk reactions and nothing ever changes. The whole point of the practice is based on the premise that human beings can change. And the change can come from within. You don't have to depend on outside forces or outside strictures to keep yourself in line. You learn to have this inner teacher, this inner questioner, who tests things, tries to find where they come from, and follows through with the thought only when it really does seem proper, really does seem reasonable really does seem right for the occasion. Part of this is what makes the practice so difficult. You're both the person being trained and you have to be your own trainer. And when the trainer comes in, listen to the actual voice of the trainer inside and the way the defilements can mimic that voice. There's a lot to sort out in here. But it can be done, as the Buddha said. If it weren't possible for people to act in a skillful way, he wouldn't teach it. And he wasn't talking only about superhuman people, supermen, superwomen. He's talking about ordinary, run-of-the-mill people. They all have the potential, if they use it, to gain awakening. So you've got to learn to sort out the voices inside you. Sort out the feelings, sort out the intentions inside you. To see who really is your good friend in there. And who needs to be trained, who needs to be expelled. 
who needs to be brought into line. You can't expect other people to do that for you. Other people can show the way, they can give advice, but the actual work is an inner work. They accuse Theravada of being selfish. It's not out there to save the whole world. Well, the problems of the world are caused by each person's lack of skill, and nobody else can make somebody else skillful. You can teach them, you can point out the way, but that's as far as it goes. Each of us has our own lack of skill, and the only way we can overcome it is to train ourselves. But we do have that capacity, we do have that potential to try to ferret it out and make the most of it. <laughs>